What's up guys, Ben Pollock here. Today, actually last week, I had the opportunity to visit a new gym called Unleashed Strength here in Manassas, Virginia. It's a small place, but it was super cool. They were super inviting and I'm very grateful for the opportunity and I'm grateful that we got the chance to record my entire deadlift training. So right now, I'm gonna take you through that workout and explain what I did, why I did it, and hopefully either you can get some kicks out of it or you can get some tips to take away and apply to your own training. So let's get started. So as you guys know, or ho hopefully know if you've been following me, I always start my workouts off with a general warm-up. And when I do that, I'm usually looking for some sort of joint mobilization slash activation, uh, getting at tight spots. And you can see these with the lower body drills I'm doing for my adductors, for my hamstrings, for my knees, all of which can, can potentially be troublesome areas. And I try to only spend about 10 minutes on my warm-up before I move into some more specialized, I'm still warming up, but you know, working with the movement that I'm going to be performing that day. Um, so here we were doing deficit pulls. You can't really see the deficit, but I've got two plates stacked up there. So it's a decent deficit. Um, I always start out with a plate. Always, 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 always. And I do like bumpers on the insides when I'm training at a commercial gym. Uh, because when you're putting a heavy deadlift down, you can really mark up those platforms. And I think that's, you know, you got to be respectful of the equipment. So that's why I do that. This was an Elite FTS Power Bar. It is stiff as fucking hell. So I was not worried about a little bit of extra bend from the bumpers. Not that I would worry about that on a deficit anyway. But you can see I just go up plate by plate, even though I'm still at a pretty small percentage of my one rep max. And the reason for that is not so much to warm up the muscles themselves. I could take bigger jumps if that's what I needed to do. Um, but really, I want to give myself as many opportunities as possible to practice the technique um, with a slowly graduating percentage of weight. And the reason for that is when you get up to those very high percentages, say 90, 95, 100%, that's when your technique starts to break down and the more reps you have for practice at, I find at various loads, the better you'll be, a, be at maintaining that technique. Um, but you can see I don't do a whole lot of reps. I think I start out with a set of five, then a set of three, and then I'm moving on to singles. So a couple things I want to call out here. Uh, first, I mentioned that I'm using the Elite FTS Power Bar. I'm using a Power Bar rather than a deadlift bar uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that I find training with the deadlift bar really does create a little bit, just a slight amount of weakness off the floor. And while that's usually not an issue for me at all, at the end of a meet, it sometimes is. And the reason it creates the weakness is because of the bend, right? You get a pretty significant bend when you're using anything other than a exact competition setup. So that means if you're using straps, if you're using pound plates, if you're using a whatever the case may be, any change is amplified by the deadlift bar. And at the end of a meet, you're fatigued because you've already squatted, right? So your lower body's fatigued. It generally, you know, assuming that you don't lift with all your back, it generally makes it a little bit harder to break that bar off the ground um, by the time your second or third attempt rolls around. So I think we're up to about 500 here. Uh, roughly, I'm not, not totally sure, um, and so I'm putting on a belt. My plan was actually to, uh, to go a little bit heavier belted, uh, but I didn't have my regular belt. I only had my real old belt uh, around with me at Unleashed because it was kind of a last-minute decision to go there, and that thing offers no support. It's At this point, it's five or six years old, and I know that's not super old for a belt, but when you have those ones that really get broken in well, like the, the plain leather uh, Pioneer belt, which is what that is, uh, the the this level of support definitely drops down uh, a little bit compared to a, a newer one, which is what I have, and I get a lot more out of my my thicker suede Pioneer cut. I find that that makes a huge difference for me, which is surprising, but it's also a, a deficit deadlift, right? So that's like all lower back. So there there's a reason uh, for almost everything that I do in my training. It's not always good reason, um, but there's always some sort of reason for it, and that's that's kind of the point I'm trying to make there. Um, and then straps because I'm pulling for reps. I always try to use straps if I'm going over three reps. And uh, the reason for that is it's just not worth a callus tear, man. A callus tear will take you out of the game. Um, it'll throw your positioning off. It won't allow you to train grip even if you want to. So it, it's, it's just not worth it. This, I believe, was 600 even. Um, this is, I think, what I considered my first heavy warm-up. And I was pretty happy with that move, how that moved. But you can see... I'm not, I'm not keeping my hips as low as I'd really like to on this. Uh, it's probably because I haven't worked at this big of a deficit in quite a while. Um, but I was a little bit frustrated with that. Uh, we also didn't have baby powder at the gym, so my awesome fiancé had to go run and uh, 
run and get me some. So I'm, I'm kind of stalling a little bit, taking smaller jumps now. I believe this was 635. And that, that one I also wasn't super happy with. It moved fine. Um, but I, I, I thought it could have moved a little bit faster. I thought my hips could have been a little bit lower. Um, and again, these are all things that I'm saying in part to myself so that I can correct them the next time. It's not enough to make these observations and make these uh, very specific changes or very intentional uh, di directions in your training if you're not going to try to improve on them every single time. Otherwise, it's just kind of obsessing over details for no good reason. Uh, this was supposed to be my last warm-up. I believe it actually was my last warm-up, but I can't swear to that, and I think it's 660. Um, like I said, pulling off the two plates, I believe that was 660. And again, pretty happy with how that moved. Uh, so then it came time for my actual work set. Uh, before my actual work set, I was planning my range was 675 to 700 for this week, was what I was shooting for for a triple at RPE 9. Um, and I ended up going with, I believe, 695. So uh, um, pretty good weight for me. The most I've done, as far as I know, for a triple with a, this exact setup, you know, two plate deficit, power bar, blah, blah, blah. I believe a 705 for triple, so so pretty close to up there. Unfortunately, it did end up being a little bit harder than I wanted. Uh, this was definitely an RPE 10, and I don't know why, because the first rep, perfect. That's right on track for an RPE 8 triple. The second rep, also right on track, right on track. There's no no hangups, no no you know slow slowing down the bar, nothing. And then all of a sudden, I just seem to hit that wall right above my knees. And then that lockout is a lot harder than I wanted. So, you know, and I probably had more weight to go for a time, but I definitely didn't have another rep there. And so I was just a little bit bummed about that. Um, I decided, and again, so this is one of those examples where, you know, I'm making a conscious de decision that's not necessarily uh, completely based on logic. It's not always shooting for the best outcome. So here, what I decided to do was do my back offsets beltless. And the reason for that was so that I could still get a nice win. I had overshot my RPE. But if I could hit my back offsets beltless, I can still deal with a lower weight and still feel like I uh, progressed in some way. Which, you know, just training itself is progress, but oftentimes it doesn't feel that way. So um, this was more of an emotional decision than, than really I would like to include in my training. But I've come to find that sometimes if you don't do the emotional things, the things that, you know, your heart wants you to do in training, you're going to be more frustrated than if you had just done them. And honestly, so I ended up, I ended up doing a back off single uh, with 635. It felt really easy. This clip is definitely out of order. I don't know what this is. Or perhaps they didn't film. So I, I wasn't actually paying attention to the filming, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I ended up working up to a triple beltless with 660. And that's on my Instagram if you want to see it. I thought it was included in this video as well. And uh, I apologize that you guys missed out on that. I think this is like a warm-up or maybe something that's out of order. Um, but yeah, so I did my first back offset at 660. That was an RPE 9 beltless, and that was actually a PR. Uh, not a huge PR because I've done 645 for four, I believe, with the same setup. So, um, but I, I was still pretty happy with it. Uh, then I moved on to some sumo work, and honestly, the reason I'm not happy with this positioning at all, I think my lower back was fried, but you can see I'm way, way too far over the bar, so I didn't do a whole lot of work here. I'm really just doing this to keep my hips loose. I find that if I train sumo heavy, it fucks my knees up. But if I don't train it at all, I'm not really able to get my hips into my conventional deadlift and my squat as much as I would like to. So I try to include some light sumo work when possible. But again, this is just trash sumo work. And honestly, I'd been better off not doing it. I think combination of the lower back fry, not able to, to open up the hips enough because of that. Right, the tight lower back pulling on the psoas, keeping those hips kind of closed. And then also lack of um, external rotation around my shoulders, pulling me weight, my torso way too far. Oh, that's ugly to watch out of that rounded upper back. I don't like that at all. That is a great conventional position, but that is a trash uh, sumo position. So, yeah, after I took a look at those videos, I, I decided to call it on sumo. I definitely didn't want to do anything that would reinforce negative patterns. All right. Um, I believe that was all we hit for this session. I finished up. Um, oh, we got some more sumo practice in here. I'm going to skip through some of this stuff.
and we're back. And so then I finished up. There were some other warm-up back off crap in there. But then I finished up with two circuits, single leg press right here. You notice I'm not going so much for the quad as for the glute. Uh, that's why I'm not bringing the leg down quite as far as I could potentially. Um, I'm really trying to squeeze that, that lower glute upper hamstring area to initiate that movement because that's a weakness for me. I did two sets of 20 on each leg, um, which was actually pretty challenging. I superset that with some ab work, um, which I was doing uh, standing ab crunches with the pulling machine, and then some seated calf raises on the uh, seated calf raises on the leg press. That's a throwback to my my very short-lived bodybuilding career. But in all honesty, <laughs> this is pretty stupid. But uh, I do think that training your calves can help your squat in terms of helping elbow mobility. I also think that my legs look kind of silly in shorts because my calves are so small. So I try to train them sometimes. Nobody's perfect. We all have our shortcomings, and mine include my calves. So, oh, and then I have 12 minutes to hit twice a week so that I don't become a total fat ass with this diet. And as you can see, I'm well on my way to total fat ass, but I also think I'm looking a lot thicker and stronger. That's all I got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching my training. Please leave any comments or feedback or questions below. And remember, think strong and train hard.